Hi, you guys. Ginger Cook here, and um, I'm going to talk to you about painting a parrot today and perhaps starting out as a stylized bird, show you where we went with the thought behind. People always want to know, what is your thought process when you do a painting? Why did you pick the colors you did? Normally, you know, when you see a parrot, uh, they're in the zoo or there's a background of somebody's yard or something. And so, so sometimes you have to decide what the background is you want with your bird. How do you want to do it? And we thought that this was sort of a fun um, example of how to paint a bird. One of the things that I'd recommend everybody do and is when you're going to start designing your own paintings, we want you to consider doing it small first. Uh, uh, when we were traveling, I went ahead and I uh, painted this one and thought I would do more of a stylized bird and came up with this, all these colors on the background. And you may like that and, and feel like that's, you know, kind of has a jazz element to it. I thought it got a little busy. I, I kind of sat and watched this uh, painting over the, the couple of weeks after I'd, I'd see it. Uh, you know, John had it taped in the room and I would look at it and think, what would I do differently? Would I keep the background the same when I do something different. So the fun thing for sure is we want to, I want to stretch the bird out a little bit, make him a little longer. And this is what we came up with. And in our video, we're going to show you a really cool way of, um, you know, making your own frame and the, and, and the trick of how not to screw it up. You also, um, uh, well, it's easy to do. The other thing I did at the end of the video that you didn't see was I went back and I darkened a few of the corners and up from the bottom to kind of close the um, a more of a vignette around the bird. So the couple of colors that you may not have that we use that are kind of nice to have is cad red. Um, uh, Cad red beading, we probably have it. If you have cadmium orange, that's my, that's one of my new favors. And cad yellow light, that's some of these bright um, uh, uh, colors that you get. And I also use thalo green, and which uh, makes a really beautiful blue and a green color. So those are probably a couple of the exceptional colors I used. And we're going to ex explain in the video how we did it. This is uh, probably in the way that you don't really see me. You just see my hands in this video and you don't see me, even though we're doing this as a premiere. This is how most of our videos are done on in our academy. We're giving you step-by-step -step lessons. So this will, it's about an hour to do this. I think you're going to get this easily. The traceable is over on our website, acrylicpaintingwithgingercook.com. Um, and if you want to find out more of the news of what we're doing, be sure you're subscribed to our YouTube Gazette. Um, make sure that you it's not in your spam folder. If you don't get one and you think you subscribe, let us know. Let's we'll try to help you get it because we give you the latest tips and tricks in the newsletter, tell you what we're doing on in the academy, what we're doing on YouTube, and other lessons you may have missed on YouTube that you might want to go back and catch. Um, that I think this is it's a it, it's it's our way of communicating with you. Uh, whether you you know just if you get email, you can find out what we're doing. So I hope you enjoy this uh, colorful parrot, and um, and it's baby painted a little differently than you thought. So enjoy our video. Okay, so we've got a um, our color chart. And uh, I, I have pre-designed the parrot. In other words, when we were traveling, I came up with this idea of how I might want a stylized parrot. And I, uh, But I wanted it larger, so it's a little bit easier to do the details. So we've got a 9 by 12 canvas with just some light uh, yellow oxide and white on it just to have a little bit of color underpainting and I've traced the bird on that what I'm going to do all right so just from an actual you know photo of the bird but we now we're gonna now we're gonna go more for the uh, the abstract so it's going to be kind of like this but who knows I may change it when we paint but that was sort of my plan I have a plan all right you guys we have a plan so um, the colors I'm thinking about and I when I'm looking at this are maybe uh, we're going to want a phthalo green we're going to want a, a, a phthalo blue, an ultramarine blue. Uh, I've, I've got cat, cat orange on here. I've got cat red medium, maybe cat red light, uh, yellow, uh, cat yellow medium, yellow oxide or ochre. Um, and of course, I'm going to suggest a black Posca pen or some sort. This isn't a Posca. This is a Eddings acrylic, but a black uh, a, acrylic pen for details like the eye and stuff like that. So we make this kind of keep this simple. Uh, we've done an awful lot of paintings of, of, of parrots that are pretty realistic. We're, we want to keep this stylized. So we, 
just a You've got thousands of photographs in the world of parrots. Let's try to be a little arty today and do something. Um, Did you say cad red? Yes, cad red. Okay. And I got cad red light, and um, I think I even have some. Um, I think you had a nap in it, too. I think you had all the three. I've got pretty much all the reds, and I've got a, um, a magenta, and I have a pain gray, which I'm not going to use. This is from a palette before. These, the wonderful thing about these Stay Wet palettes is you can use them again and again. I had, I don't think we need zinc white, but we've got pretty much the, the yellows. So the, we want to get the the bird painted. We want the yellows. You want to you want to kind of cement those in. Slide uh, the palette to the left, if you would, my dear. What's that? Slide the palette to the left. Yeah, okay, like that. So let's just put our color chart away. To get those bright yellows, you need to do those first in these golds. So this is this cad yellow. I'm going to come up here on him and give a little coat of that just because I want something pretty bright here. All right, I'm going to come around here and this is the color I'm wanting to go first now. Also, make sure you have a clean brush when you're painting with yellow. Um, if you've got some dirt on it, it won't look pure yellow anymore. Someone said to me one time, I don't understand um, why I have all these um, problems with yellow. Problems with yellow, and sometimes it's your brush. If the water's dirty, um, you know when you go to clean a brush, you have to wash it with soap several times to get all the paint out. And so just because you rinse it in water and then go back and try a light color, sometimes that's not quite what you want to be doing. So you get a clean, clean cloth here. The other thing, too, is a little tip for the day is that when you're wiping your brush on a cloth, if it's all dirty, you're going to pick up that color, too. So keep moving your cloth around. Give yourself a clean place to wipe. All right, so I know that I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow down here in the tail. I know I've got some coming down here like that. I'm just I'm trying to think where I have yellow. That's pretty much, that's, that's pretty much it. So we don't have to get too crazy, but also, I don't want to lose the shape of the bird. So now the next thing I think I want to do is take some, um, I'm going to rinse the brush now with the yellow, wipe it off. Just see, look at all the yellow on the brush. Let's do it again. Wipe it off. Can you see that? All the yellow that's off now. Now I want to come up here and make sure I don't, I don't want to lose the beak. All right, so I'm going to take a little of the paint. I guess I am going to use Payne's Gray, a little ultramarine blue. I left it in there. Yeah, I'm going to do that and uh, just come down here and a little angle brush here and do the beak. This is going to be, if you, you trace this on this large, and it's going to be it's easier for you. Payne's Gray, if you don't own, own it, is black and ultramarine blue. So... This is, on, this is on a 9 by 12 canvas, in case you missed yeah, that. Yeah, 9 by 12, and I think I want the, um, I didn't in my design, but here I'm going to say I want the, uh, the I feet, think I feet. want the feet to be dark. I'm going to come around here like that and say I want the claws to be dark on the palace that dark. I had them in pink before, but we're not going to do that, okay? And we'll bring those, we're going to wrap those claws around this perch give the top give the top a little curve okay so that's that's some stuff that we know we want to have okay and t take a moment to dry off and if you're you're doing a dark color and some light ones you know that doesn't hurt to dry it in between all right now all right so there's that now I the next thing I can do is if I've had this dark on the brush I either have to change brushes or make sure that I've rinsed it really really well now what's what can happen so make sure that when you do that you don't have any more color coming out so um I think I again I want to do with that did I put the um let's just take some phthalo blue and yellow and make a great green all right. Kind of, a, like pretty, a, teal green, yeah. kind of a tealy green. A warm teal. A warm teal. And now it's a little bit of white with that. Yeah, and let's just come up here like, oops, like this. And um, I'm going to put this color here just a little bit. 
All right, just, I just don't want to lose my bird. I'm going to then take some white and come up this way. Okay. And then a little more white come down here. So I'm just sort of putting in the bottom. I'll put some other layers over this bird, but just putting in some kind of kind of outlining them a little bit, I guess. I'd say I'm doing that. Here's a little ultramarine blue. Come down here like that. That's a great color. Isn't that pretty? A little bit of ultramarine blue. I haven't rinsed it's my a brush. looking color. Yeah, I haven't rinsed my brush. It's still stylized, but we're going to keep some of the colors, you know, fairly true to what that would be. All right. And I'm just going to do this. And I'm taking a little bit of cad bread right here and doing this. Because I had blue on it, now it looks brown. Little trick. All right. Okay, so I've got that. Now I've got, um, let's see, I'll rinse the brush. And where else do I need that color? See, look, when I rinsed it, look at all the blue that was on there. And then I just put some blue here. There, I'm going to come down here like this and say this is lighter here. And uh, maybe I'll put some of that color in here. Like that. And let's see, anything else? Um... There we go. Hey, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us this evening. This is kind of, kind of a different way we're doing YouTube. We haven't done one of these. We just, you know, when we when we do premieres, that means that we're we're not available to um, appear in person. To appear in person, and sometimes it just, you know, I do these ahead of time, and it may be a day when we're just not ready to just see everything. Just, you know, can't do all the ginger on some days. So this, we thought we'd just try it. I can do a lot more of these quicker if I don't spend, you know, have to do too much more than just film what we're painting. And um, so. And isn't that what you really want to see? So now, because I've got blue on the brush, and I want to go back, this is yellow, it's still a little damp. I want to dry everything. And... Um, Oh, because as I put other colors, when you start mixing reds and blues and all these colors together, you get muddy colors. So the key to any of this is just to make sure you're always drying and using clean brushes and clean water. Let's see, I need to find phthalo green. Here we go. All right, I want to try something here and take some white and phthalo green, which really makes a gorgeous blue color. Okay. White, thalo, green. It really isn't green at all. See if I'm still. Yeah, that's nice. All right. I'm going to put some of this thalo green here. Put a few little shadow colors here on the bird, like that. And I'm going to take a little bit of thalo blue and thalo green. And I want to have a little shadow color under here, like that. Maybe a little bit of a shadow color down under here, like this. All right, now the background, when we get to doing the background, some of you may not like the background I picked. I'm gonna do it a little different than I did in my sample when I was sort of working out my design stuff. But still, you may not wanna do that and that's all right. You can come up with a different background. I'm just showing you how I'd paint this, all right? And now I think at the same time, I could probably do this perch. And uh, 
think so. I could do the perch here. Um, let's see, let's put a little dark here. Like that, like there, like that. All right, I want to keep it simple. I'm not trying to get this too complicated. You know, that's that's it. So, that being said, I'm going to change and just dry this for one more time, just real quick. I'm going to pretty much finish the bird before I do the background, and here's why. If you don't want to do the background the way I do, I'm intending to do it, then, then it, you have the bird finished and you can do some other stuff. What do you think? So if this is cadmium orange, I'm going to put that right here like that. I'm going to take a little yellow, cad, cad yellow medium and cadmium orange, and kind of mix that, come up here with a little bit lighter orange. Okay. All right, now let's come back with yellow. Now my brush is dirty, so what happens is when I come back with the yellow, I can mush these in together like this, and I'll get some sort of a um, more of a, like a blending effect, right? Because I then take a little bit of cad red medium. I know I want something darker, even red right under here. Okay. So that's where we know we want a shadow. But then we'll take a little more of the cad cadmium orange right here. Bring that down. I'm going to take a little magenta because I don't quite have the dark shadow under here that I want. Yeah, you know, notice I put the paint on, wipe it off. I don't know if you guys see me doing that enough. I put the paint on, wipe it off, and I want this to just smudge this out here like that. Just a little bit. And uh, don't really need to do that anywhere else, but maybe right here on the side of this feathers. Okay. So now on this part, we'll take a little bit of the orange, cat orange, and come up like this. Just bring your brush up and then what, rinse the brush, okay? Wipe it off, just pinch it, come into the yellow, and go over this like that. Just some little brush strokes like that. There you go, just like that. And then just put that shadow back. There you go. So you don't have to do much. It's just, you can just take your finger if you want, a little finger painting. There you go. Now can you classify it as a finger painting? Well, I guess you could because we we did a little finger painting here, yep. didn't we? And we just put a little shadow under there. Let me make that a little darker right there. But because we had that nice light yellow to start with, we've got this beautiful bit of yellow right in here. We can come down here like that and say we want some yellow in here. And a little bit of that cad orange. There we go. And just say we want some yellow right in here. There we go. So that's kind of nice, kind of like that. So you can kind of, you don't want to overdo it, but that's that's the secret with, um, see I'm all out of yellow. This is cad yellow light. Let's try some of that as long as I'm putting on a new yellow. This is always fun. Let's just grab some of that right there. Ooh, love that, don't you? That's nice. Just a little bit of sparkle there. The sparkle color. There you go. Okay. It's still wet, so it's all sort of smudging in there. All right. So then if you wanted to go ahead and not make a stylized bird, you're pretty much, you're pretty close to being make, making a fairly realistic one, if that's what you wanted to do. So we're going to give you a few options on that. Just a few, not too many. Just pull it and push up like that. Okay. And what do we know for sure on when you're painting something like this? Well, we know for sure that um, uh, you want to be drawing in between. Okay, you want to be drawing. All right, I'm going to dry all this.
All right, now we have an area that we need white. This is titanium white. We know we need it white right around here like this, where this interface is. Okay, it's gotta be white. And uh, we'll put the black marks over it, but that's, uh, all that has to be white. We know where it's where the, um, We got these kind of neat. This where we're going to use the Posca pen. We're going to do the outline. So, some of you may not. Sometimes I used to tell you stories. I might tell you a couple now. That uh, my ex husband, George, uh, used to rescue parrots. He kind of. So, we ended up with a few. Some of my earlier recordings, you'll hear the birds in the background. So long ago that was. And. Um, Good old days. Huh? The good old days. Yeah. So, all right. I want to just say I want uh, some sort of. Uh, not sure how I want to do the perch yet, so we'll just leave that. But if you were going to do it and not do, if you weren't going for, if you were not going for, um, uh, a stylized, and at this point is where you'd stop and, and you know maybe make it more like a stick. So let's take a little bit of the phthalo green and yellow, and a little bit of the yellow oxide. There you go. Yellow oxide has kind of a little bit of red in it. Let's come on up here, and just come up here like this and put that on here. There you go. Yeah, it's funny, small little things like that make a difference. And here's a little dark blue. We're gonna come around here like that and give it almost a little outline here. This little dark shadow here. All right. I'm gonna, that's, that's our dark. Okay, so. I come up here to the just go into the uh, the dark paints gray color now. This is where we're talking about. If you were still, if you wanted to have less of a stylized bird, and then this is what you would do. Um, you just paint it more in the natural colors that you would see on these birds. Okay. Give it a coat of that. And uh, we'll just bring that around like that. There. So that's, a, you know, so again, if you want to just think about how you would be painting a bird, you might want to paint it like that. We still can get some, you know, pretty vibrant and pretty colors. This is where these birds are what we have, what we call jewel toned animals. They just have these beautiful colors. And they're quite, you could, this is where you could do some of those shimmery paints, right, John? With the, you know, yeah. I think we have some where you could do, if you wanted to, didn't do a stylized bird, you could do some shimmering blues and stuff. Kind of pretty. I'm going to take some dark blue, which would be ultramarine, come up here and do another little layer of dark right up in here. Like that, and you see that's a different blue all wrapped together, right? And the same thing here, it's a different blue. And I want to come up here and just make sure we have something darker coming up on this section, like that. All right. So everything is about contrast. There's a little phthalo blue. Want another little dark bit right there. A little bit of dark right here. So just take your time, think about the colors that you're using, and um, give it a little bit of a chance to uh, let's put a little bit more blue on this beak here. I think it's kind of prettier than them. Uh, I want to curve it around, finish the shape here. There, okay, so I've got kind of worked on the shape of the beak a little bit using my actual reference photo that I'm looking at to make sure that I have the bird correct. So, so far so good, let's try it.
I wanted to just take a moment while I'm drawing to show you another parrot painting that we have in our academy, acrylic painting with gingercook.com. This is, a, I think, a two-cookie lesson beginner bird. It's a, it's a red and blue, blue macaw, which are different. This was painted more in tropical, more realistically, as opposed to our stylized bird. Though they're, but they, they go together. And the nice thing about it, when you look at our palette of colors, do you see how... This is the bird. <laughs> Just, <laughs> those are our colors. And, and I want to say that because uh, on YouTube recently we did the carousel horses. And again, if you look at these, these are the, a lot of the colors that you see me use in our paintings because they're pretty together. So if, if, if an artist has a palette and everyone says I'm the queen of color, that would it be. But one of the surprises we're going to have this year that people have requested and our, we have um, our membership that comes with personal art coaching is blue, uh, which is wave and water, um, which just, just focuses on that, and red, which is uh, the, the majority of our tutorials. And then we have uh, a purple membership, which is um, has always been wave and water, and the red membership, which is the other 500 tutorials of all the different subjects, on landscapes to flowers to whatever, all coming with personal art coaching. This year... We're going to add for our purple membership, we're going to start focusing on putting people in landscapes and portraits. And that will be for our purple members. The Royal Purple members will we'll focus on that and we'll make sure that there are videos up. These are a couple of the ones that will be released soon. And uh, just the simple basics of how to paint someone from behind and still to, and how your paintings can tell a story. So those are a couple of things that are coming up. We're also going to be talking to you about uh, not just painting one of something, but making collections of things. So you have maybe the same subject, maybe painted differently, maybe four times so that you have a collection. And that's also nice and for those of you who are looking to sell your artwork too. Uh, it's, it's good to have a, what they call a body of work or a theme. So we're going to talk about that in our academy. So if you're looking at that for the new year, want to get a head start on your painting this year, talk to, talk to us about acrylic painting with gingercook.com. Become a Royal Purple member and let your painting career just explode. Okay. So I think I will take a brush and just decide on some sort of color for this. Uh, Are you not doing that till you get a clear thing? Do you do that? Do you just take your rag and rinse it until you get something a little bit more clear on the brush that so you're not dragging one color into another? Certainly hope you're doing that. So let's let's take a little bit of um, I think yellow oxide. Let's just say that I'm going to say that that's our the color of our perch. This is just the underpainting for that, but let's let's assume that's what we want. Got to start somewhere with this, so let's, let's take a little bit of this orange color and bring it on down. Put a little paint. There we go. All right, so we've got. And we'll put. We'll, we'll work on the feet later. So that's, that's kind of, you know, when you're just thinking about how to do stuff, just sort of do it in steps, right? You can always come back and layer. So we're going to take a clean brush and we'll start putting in some of our background. Now, and again, this is where you might deviate from what I'm doing. I'm going to take some white and some little some cat orange. I'm just going to come on up here like that. Oh, let go and maybe some light yellow. This is cat yellow light. Everything's sort of one color sort of melting into another. Maybe another bit of orange right here. This is a little slightly different color than what I just put on. Let's take a little bit of white, maybe magenta. Start right here. Notice how I'm just sort of, almost like a sunset, I'm sort of blending these in like that, overlapping. 
Let me come under here and try another little bit of the cad light and cadmium orange. That's pretty. So these are all very warm tones, and the blue is the cool tones on this. A little yellow oxide. Let's try that. Sort of pretty. I'm going to come on up here like that. A little bit of white and cad red. There you go. These are all kind of smudge colors. You see what we're doing? Now, let's do a little bit of... Um, kind of blur them all together. Yeah, let's take a little bit of this color here. We've got an awful lot of pictures of parrots with just a um, um, real parrot-looking things. Let's try a little bit of yellow. So normally you would see in the background here, unless you were in some sort of place where there was a sunset, these are sort of sunset colors. Normally what you would see is that, you know, more blue jungly backgrounds. They sort of camouflage in with that, with the greens and the yellows, like they're bright flowers. Uh -huh. Where did the yellow go? Need some yellow. Where did I put it? I'll find it eventually. We'll be rattling around looking for the yellow. No. What does that mean, John? Is this the time to pause the video and go look for the yellow? Could have sworn I had it out. You had it earlier because you got some squirted out there. I did. Isn't that funny? I did. Maybe I put it away. Oh, well, that's good. Sometimes I do that by mistake. I put it away. Here's some. All right. Got it. All right. So we're going to just take a little bit of these orange tones. Like here, let's just do something like that. A little bit of water on my brush now because I want to have this all sort of Mill together, so not as busy as I made this one. This got a little busy for me. I've just had a chance to kind of look at that and see what I wanted to do. So that's why we always recommend you consider before you get too carried away with your your artwork and stuff you're doing. Consider just doing a small study. That's what these are. We need to do something little and then say, okay, I know I want that, but maybe not that. Okay. Here we go, we're gonna cut around here like that. I'm just going up and down. So again, sort of more of a stylized painting, yes and yes. And this is a ruby satin silver brush. It's a little softer than the the um, Bristolon. That's the silver Bristolon brushes. So when you do one of these, you got um, uh, it 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 spreads the paint slightly differently. Your brushes really make a difference. A lot of times you think, well, I just can't do it. I can't get what Ginger does, or don't get what her daughter's doing. I don't get what you guys are doing. A lot of times, it is just the brushes we use. All right. Make sure we're going all the way to the edge on this. And we saw this brush is allowing me to blend in to more than, you know, some of the others, right? This is kind of doing that, right? So cool, right? And I, I think that sort of it really does have sort of the, the sort of this feeling of a sunset. I kind of kind of like it. 
uh, as opposed to, you know, just still trying to decide because there's something rather nice about just this. So we'll, I'll go back and dry this and let's focus on finishing the bird and see if we want to add more to the background. What do you think? I want a little bit more contrast back there. All right, right. pull my. All right. So this is where my Posca pen is going to come in. This is this one isn't a Posca, but this is where this kind of pen is going to come in. I'm going to come around here like this, and I'm going to go. There's my. There, like that, and then this comes around. Sometimes something like this is just a little bit easier to do if you, um, he's got a little bit lower on the bottom of his eye, like that. All right, and then he's got these. You can do the dots if you want. Almost like Morse code dashes. And again, these are just a little bit more tricky to do if you were using a... Um, um, I want to come up here like this and do that. Curve that up here like that on the top of his nose, like that, and then curve this around like that. Make sure that's curved. I'm going to bring this around here like this. And we're going to come in here like his mouth, like this, and kind of close it a bit on his beak. We won't have it. Now we can bring the hook down. And most of you are going to find it's easier to use a pen like this when you're, and it's not really a pen, there's actually acrylic paint in them. You're not cheating by using those. You're just kind of using, um, there you go, see? So you've got that, that enabled you to do the detail. Yeah. This needed to be up here a little higher. There you go. That needed to be up here, and I can do that still. Okay. So I can. The other thing is you've got if you've got a white pen and dark pen or white brush or dark, but Posca pens are acrylic. So what you want to do when you're doing these, all right, is dry it. Don't try to do anything until you've dried it. All right. So let's just dry the face. All right. Now, in stylized, you might not have as much detail as we're putting in when you're doing stylized art, but you can't could. It just doesn't necessarily mean you wouldn't have any. And um, so let's just make sure we have, if your brush has been sitting out in water, make sure you have all the, all the water out of the metal part to get stuck in there. And let's take some titanium white now. I'm just gonna separate this a little bit. Come around here like this. Just do a little bit of touch up. So you've got a couple of options. You just come back with another white Posca pen. I'm just going to saturate this eye a little bit. Okay, like that. Because I remember I only did one coat of paint on the top of this. So this goes over his nose like that. So there you go, that, that's where this has to go. And then this comes around his nostril like that. Okay, so that, that we know for sure, so we're gonna put it there, okay? And then if I come down here on the top, I might take some of this lighter blue color and wipe off a touch off and then just do a few little touches like that on his beak. Um, all right, so not, don't get, don't panic about trying to get something perfect. 
you just know you're going to want to do something like that. There you go. So you got a pretty nice painting if you didn't do anything else, right? But we'll go ahead and we'll work on the feet, make sure that we've connected the feet to the... Um, to our um, perch. We're going to come kind of connect them over here. Our claws. I think they're not feet, are they, John? They're claws. People often ask us, what's, what's the difference between a cat? In most of our academy lessons, you have a tutorial like this. It, you don't have a lot of talking from either John or I. You'll just have a... Um, um, a lesson. You'll have a lesson, probably more like this. This is what, how that will go. So mm -hmm. just, you know, it's just a, some people find that's a little easier to focus on. And so all our academy lessons are just pretty much filmed like this. And then I might want to take some white and uh, There, I'm just going to make some. This is white and um, um, they look green, and um, I'm going to put a little bit more white in it. And I want some kind of two toned stuff in here, like this. This is our second layer of feathers. Then because my brush is dirty, I don't have to get any more blue paint. I'll just come down here like this and just suggest some feathers. Again, kind of more in a stylized painting style, but still, if you you would recognize that, let's try a little phthalo blue and white. What little brush are you using there? That's that one came out of that nifty kit, you know? Oh, a little modeling kit. This little modeling kit. There was like 24 brushes in it. That's our Titian precision brushes. Yeah, we got that in our Amazon store. Yeah, and I just, I, I love that, this brush. Really glad I don't like every brush in the kit, but but I like a lot of them. Yeah, you. Right? I know one you wore out. Yeah, and you, you <laughs> can wear them out, right? Do like that. And then I'm going to take a little bit. I want this a little bit darker here. It's going to come up here like that. That's going to have a little more dark right there. And uh, these are kind of, he's doing this. Kind of, there you go. So that's a happy bird, isn't it? Don't you think so? Looks Sometimes the, the look they get out of they're just almost, you know, they're almost scary. But this one's kind of, I think this one's kind of happy looking. Uh, to me, anyway. Just, I think so. So now uh, let's get back to our perch. And we, you know, we still have to, even in stylized, we still have to have a light and a dark side. So let's take a little bit of brown. And um, you can see this is the bottom part of our perch right here. Like that. The underside. Maybe it's some, that's burnt sienna. I'll take a little Payne's gray with it. And let's say we want this pretty dark under here like that. Yeah, and then I'm going to rinse the brush. This is a trick. Then wipe it off so I don't have any water on it. I'm going to come back in here to our yellow oxide. Come back up here, maybe a little bit of red. Come back here. Oh, well, that's a cool color of cad red. Wipe that off. I'm not sure I want that color. Maybe a little yellow. Wipe that off. So then when I'm dealing with this color, see, like this. I can kind of smudge these dark edges out in combination of that. I'm not trying to say too much about this perch here. It's just, there it is, kind of dark. Wipe the excess off, then smudge the edge, barely touch it. All right, yes, yes, and yes. So, again, you could stop there and just do that. Uh, make sure it's dark under the bottom part of this where it would be in shadow. Could have put a branch, could have put a lot of things, but got this for sure, right? There's your bird, and I'm kind of happy with that. Now, 
I'm going to, I had such dark paint on there, I'm going to rinse that off, the brush, so wipe it off so there's nothing on there. And then I think I want to bring some halo blue and white, bring some of these feathers like this, let me bring a couple like that. There you go. Can I make this a little lighter? I keep going back to my actual bird reference because it's sort of fun. I want to come up here with this brush and do that. And let's get some yellow. Get it on the top. Ooh, too much paint. See that? Get a big glob of paint, then wipe it off. Don't us And then let's go more green here. Just let's just punch the colors up a little bit brighter. A little more yellow. There you go. Ah, there's a little bit of this green edge coming around him like that too, see? And now they start to, boy, you put that green next to it, and suddenly it gets, you know, it gets tropical, doesn't it, John? Isn't that interesting? You put those colors, oh, and it just, it just gets so tropical. And I, people always say, you know, how do you decide what you want to paint? And, you know, again, you have to decide whether you're doing a realistic bird or you're going to do a stylized bird, or what were you thinking about doing? You know, what was your thought? You know, what, what was the big plan here? And, you know, it just depends. Um... I know I want a little bit of more orange right there. Right there where this bird is, right there. It's just a little bit more where his, he is. All right, so there's the big, um, that's kind of cute. And um, I kind of like that. Um, this is where it's fun to have more colors. This is, what color is this? This is a Chevron blue. This is what I love stuff like this where you, I'll say I save our coffee sticks. I don't want to put a bunch of paint out on that, but I might get a. That's a, your portable palette. My portable palette is my little coffee stick stirs, and I recycle them. So I kind of look at that and say, would I want any of this color on here like that? Well, now you're going to use it as a brush, no? Way. Well, I'm not really, but I'm going to just. <laughs> I just wanted to put a dab of this color because I got pretty close to mixing this, didn't I? So. Well, you did. So, and you look at the color right below, and it looks pretty darn darn Yeah, doesn't it? Uh, didn't I kind of mix that? Yeah. So there's no real. This is why I'm glad. You know, there's no great. There's no great benefit to putting that out, right? So all right. So buy stick. We don't want that one. What else we got? This is the fun ginger's hunting to her. Do you have that? A bunch of paint you hardly ever use, and then you think, wouldn't it be fun? Okay, here's this is one of my f favorite colors, but I would never use it. Uh, I've got, ooh, well, we got to put it out now. This is Matisse's Southern Ocean. Oh, what do you got there? Matisse's other Southern Ocean Blue. Oh. And it's supposed to be a combination of phthalo green and phthalo blue, but it really is quite unique. No, so there's something else in there. You can, you can come close to making it, though. You can, but not, not as close, right? So let's see what we get with that one, because I'm just, are we just... Uh, here we go. Some of that. It's close. Look at that. I mean, have, have we? This is why I always stick with my main colors. Every once in a while, I get kind of excited about something, and I'll think, "Well, what if I had this color? This is this the Southern Ocean blue. It's really phthalo green and um, uh, phthalo blue. So anyway, that's Matisse and Southern Ocean blue. So and you usually use it with white to lighten it up. Yeah, you lighten it with white. See, we just do something a little bit darker here, like that. So again, you're talking about. Um, I really, I so like phthalo green. I want something very light right here. That's what I love with phthalo green. There you go. So wing on the other side, and that I think you could just. Um, uh, let's see, let's finish the stand. I think you could just call that a, a painting all, all by itself. Just something very simple, I'm not trying to get too crazy. Wouldn't take you very long to paint it. And I, I kind of like that, don't you? And you can just, 
immediately get some sort of kind of instant gratification like that. So I'm going to take some it's a clean brush. Doesn't have any water on it or anything, right? I'm going to take some of this light yellow. I want to come over the top of this and um, just some suggest there's some light. I want to put some moss on there. That's it. not even that. Put some. Oh, my God. Is it perching there or what? Yeah, he's perching there. Right? Like that. And then maybe there's a little bit of. What could we do to make that a little bit just maybe the lights hitting and I want to suggest the sunset, right? So that's that's kind of nice. It made it feel round, didn't it? And we didn't have to do much. It maybe too much paint. See that too much paint. Okay, let's going back to my look at that. I'll take a little bit of this is our this is the part where we some queen of color, but look at that one. Just do that. See? And um, then you could take like a tiny bit of white. I'll just put it on the end of here, on the end of my brush, and just come up to his eye and do a little dot right there. Careful, careful. Yeah. No, well, if I could always put black paint, if good. I did get it right, then. And and you've got um, and you've got a front. I think you've got kind of a very nice painting, and it's it's just it's a very nice contrast between the. Um, you know, your lights and your blue colors, right? But you want to be deliberate. Don't just make sure you have the paint there. You actually painted it. Make sure that you're deliberate there. There you go, like that. Make sure that this is all d d deliberate. And there you go. It's a good example of warm and, and cool colors. And even though I kind of like this, now we're talking about the decisions that you make, then you get down to the how arty do you want to make it, right? And, and and again, when you get this bigger and with more detail, it's sort of fun, isn't it? And for instance, like a little bit of light right here on the beak right there, like that, okay? And uh, let's see, I'm going back to my reference. What is this? There, good, like that. So if you do too much more than that, you know, and just... Keep that in mind, right? If you if you continue to do too much more, right, than that, let's bring this eye out a little bit more like that. There you go. Just small changes like that. Then, you know, how busy do you want to make it? Then this is a nice statement. So let's pause the video for a minute. Do we have any 9 by 12 frames? Well, yeah, of course we have 9 by 12 frames. This is a silly question. Let's, let's show what this would look like at a frame. Over here, let me get up and get that for you, my queenness. Yeah, let's just show if you just did nothing else, because I think that that's, that's sort of nice, just the way this is, myself. I think you can't get to them, why not? I want a little bit more contrast between the, the this side and this side. So I'm going to just put a little more blue here, okay? Where his feathers are. All right, John's found something. I always like it when John. Yeah, there you go. Let's do, do that. So. Oh, I was in by ten rat. Well, let's we'll see what it would be. Point put over. Look at that thing. It's going to talk to you a little bit like that. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. You know, I don't think they make that frame in a 9 by 12 No, they don't, but it's pretty, isn't it? I don't know why they don't. They're handmade. I, I, I don't, and either we should write, these are from Jerry's, right, Anorama? I don't want a feather going this way. There, like that, and just kind of overlap with one like that, one big feather. Put a little white with it. There you go. One big feather. This is kind of nice, and if you, you don't have to get it just too complicated. I think that's kind of pretty. Just, well, it's no 9 by 12s, but you get the idea of what this is. What that may look like. Yeah. Now, your other option, for instance, Hold see. Hold on a second. Let me just drop that down a scope. Can you see that? Yeah, just do that like there that. There you go. You can see that that's. Well, if you made this bird an eight by ten, you could make it like this and just cut them well, yeah, out here. Eight by ten frame, so yeah. You yeah, could you could do certainly that. make it like that and use an eight by ten frame, right? Couldn't you? I think it's pretty fancy looking. 
Yeah. And it's just, that I think is a kind of a neat painting. Again, I did a, 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 a sketch and this got a little, maybe a little, little stylized. It's still, so it's sort of a cross between a stylized painting, and more realistic, a little bit arty, I think. I think we've got something arty going on here, which of course we want. And I want some dark, listen, we need another dark color right there. There you go. You want that contrast between the between the between the um, the light and the dark on the on the uh, background. So I tell you what, I think we're gonna I'm not gonna go any further with this. I think we're gonna stop here. I I might want to just do a few more little touches of light on the um, uh, on our because uh, this. Just lighten this up right here like that on our perch, but yeah, huh? I think that's fun. And could I do anything more? Let me just double check with the, um, it, it, really, we don't need to do that much more with the tail. Sometimes the tail okay, has take, some, take the frame off, please. Yeah, sometimes the tail has some very nice, um, like right in here, I think we lost the that blue. I'll just bring some blue down like that because I just want the blue there and maybe even some darker blue right there because of the contrast. There you go. Like that. There, that's it. That's what I, that's what I feel it needs to just sort of finish it off. But, um, huh. All right. I, feel nice just, I think I kind of like that just the way it is. I don't think we need to do anything else. I hope uh, you guys like it and have fun with this and, just play with it. You know, again, someone would say, what if I had a um, blue background? Um, then it wouldn't show up. <laughs> if you do a green background, it wouldn't show up. You need something that's going to show up. Um, and I think this does. So, my dear friends, I hope that you um, have subscribed to our channel. If you're over here on, are we putting any, how long have we been here, John? An hour. We've been an hour here, yeah. so I hope you subscribe to our channel. This is, again, like a little bit different way of, of doing stuff Nothing. than we normally do, but uh, it's still a premiere, and I think it's. I think this is really a very fun parrot. If you have a parrot lover in your uh, life. Um, or just a bird lover. Or a bird lover, yeah, that might be the thing. And, you know, if you did this on a wider gallery wrap, like a wider frame, what I would do, right, you want to see what I would do? Yeah. All right, let's pause the video for a second. Just pause it. Let me dry everything. All right. You dried it good? Okay, this is a half inch wide. Let me back out a little bit. What are you going to be doing? I'm going to, all, all, uh... I'm going to go ahead and show you the old tape trick. The old tape trick. I'm going to come along here, pull it tight like this, right on the edge. Okay, right there on the edge. It might be better if you painted your paint all the way to the edge before you did this, but <laughs> you should. You know, minor details. Minor details, right? And then take a palette knife, right? Hold that. Take a knife and then just hold it tight and cut it like that. Okay, I did that. You just take the knife and. Pull it. Okay. There, like that. See how I'm cutting that? Yeah. Now, my thought is, and I'm not going to do the whole thing. Let's just do one side and see what we think, right? My thought is to take a brush. If we even like it before we do everything, we'll just let you have the choice, right? Take that thalo green color, right? And, uh, I'm going to paint the sides blue. Or the teal. Kind of that teal color. That's one of my favorite colors, you know that? Of course you know it, but maybe you other, other guys don't know it. Okay? Yeah, other people didn't know it. Maybe not know it, but I'm going to paint that sort of teal here. All right. Now, you could do a little border around it too, but I, I don't want to do that. Now I'm going to dry that and t then take the tape off, all right?
So that if you imagine, okay, so we didn't really do a very good job of painting this to the edge. I say we. I know you didn't paint it with me. So. I, say, what's this I blame mean? it all of you, too, because if I didn't do it, you didn't do it either. So I might have wanted to take the orange go and go all the way to the edge here, right, on this. Be very careful now after the fact. Yeah. But that being said, now that we kind of we're experimenting here, right? So now you could do something like this. Kind of gives it an accent. And, and give it a little accent color it's just kind on of the a edges. Frame without a frame. Yeah, just if you didn't, you know, you don't want it to, don't want to frame it, but you don't want it to be um, tacky looking. Tacky looking. You you want to tape it because these are rounded edges, and it's really easy to mess it up. But see, I think that's kind of pretty. Do you think so, John? Do you like it? Oh, I love you, it. I've seen people that do black like that. And again, you could come out even further and do a little edge like that and make a little frame. But I think that that maybe gets a little too crafty looking, home craft looking. Yeah. So I think if you're just talking about when you hung it on the wall like that, you'd see this blue frame. And it might might be pretty. If you just, you know, if you can, couldn't do a frame. So those are some small little suggestions. And um could, you could also just continue the orange all the way around the outside, too. That would be another way to do it, too. Just paint the edges, and that would do, too. Just something if you want to but if you want to have, like, an edge like that, make sure you tape it so you have a clean edge. So, again, we want to thank everybody for watching, and um, we hope this was fun. And we thank you guys for the ones that gave us a thumbs up and subscribed to our channel. Well, and everybody gave us a thumbs up. Why wouldn't they? Well, I couldn't imagine, but I don't know. Did, they, they did, right? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody did that. So thanks, you guys. And for those of you that, um, uh, you know, contributed to our scholarship fund, we thank you very much for that, and we appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you uh, soon.